In this tutorial, we're going to be taking a look. How do we get our enemy to return back home to its original position where it started? From our sequencer, let's drag off a node, action task, assign an action task, and let this be a set vector. We're going to create a vector. But we are going to be creating a vector from our position. Setting and creating may seem a little bit confusing at first, but the first variable that you see in Vector3 and most all other nodes, that's the one being set. And it's being set by value B. So let's go ahead and create a new variable for value A, which is a Vector3, and name it Start Position. Now, how are we gonna get our position? We gotta think about this for a second. We need to get our current position at the time that this is set. So in variable B, uh, we, we don't wanna create a variable here. We actually wanna go to the upper right, go add variable, bound, self, property, transform, and position. You can see in this menu that you have many other options besides just position. So any variable that is public and available to any one of your scripts or components on that object is right there available to you. And already you can see that that variable is completely different from the other variables we have before. And that's because it's constantly being set by the actual component part that's on the object. Back at value B, let's go ahead and set to the start position to our new variable we just created, position. But if we play this, we have a problem to set a new position. and We only want the beginning. The very first time we start the tree, that's the position we want. Back at the sequencer, let's drag off another node. Now we're gonna create a decorator, and this one is called a filter. Go ahead and hook these guys up, organize your tree a little bit, and we'll explore what does this filter do. So automatically you see it says cooled, that's the default status. So that's the amount of seconds that this is gonna run and say, no, this won't fire again until after the cooldown is at zero, and then it can fire again. But obviously that's not what we want. So click on the mode, we have a limit number of times. The default one is one time. If you click play, you can see that this is exactly what we want. Start position is set one time, only at the beginning, the first time the tree gets fired because it's on the furthest left side of our sequencer. Now the rest is easy. Go to our return home node, set the move to target position to our start position. Click play and you'll see Everything works. Optional thing to do. If you want to, let's go back to the scene and let's duplicate this sphere. And you'll see that it also duplicating the blackboard, but they all have specific blackboards. So if you change one blackboard, it's not gonna affect the others. They are completely independent of each other. In the next, next tutorial, we're gonna be exploring options of how to create one tree for one character that if you change one tree, it's gonna affect all the characters, which we will call modular trees. That's all for this tutorial. In the next one, we'll finish this project up really quickly and look at what's coming.